In HTML5, they added a lot of semantic elements, including one to keep track of times and dates. So you can see here in my HTML that I have a time element that I've wrapped around all of these different values. Now the thing is, when people write times and dates, there's a lot of different ways that you can write this information. That makes it very difficult for computers or search engines to figure out what you actually mean. If it's just a string of letters and numbers, if they are words, or what's the implied meaning behind that because there are so many different ways to write it. That's the purpose behind the time element. Now visually, it doesn't do anything to this content. It's providing meaning for computers, for search engines, things like that. So what we do is we put this time element around it and then inside the time element we add an attribute called date time. Inside of here we write a standardized representation of that date. So here, this is just a date, it's a year, month, and a day. So in the format year, month, day, we write that out. So 1969-12-4. That is the standard representation of that date. So for October 20th. So if it's just a month and a year, we can do that. And we can come in here and say, okay, the month is 10 and the day is 20. That's what this two numbers will represent. Uh, if we want to go into here and 14th week, we can represent that as well. So we have a year in 2019, then W, and then the number of the week. If we have times as well, we start with the year, month, day. So just like above, 2001-02-15, that is the standard year. Now to put on the time, what we should do is put a T and then it's followed by the hours, minutes, seconds, and milliseconds. So hours, minutes, I don't have any seconds here. Uh, this would be the 24 hour clock. If I wanted to add seconds here, I could do that as well, or I could just say 0.000. So you can go up to that level of specificity about the time. Durations. If you want to have something that says, I'm talking about three days or three hours or 2.5 hours or something like that, we can do that here. So we start with P, meaning period, and then D, I'm talking about a day, or T for a time, and I want three three days. This last one, we're looking at the same sort of idea, but it's hours, so it's a period, and there's going to be 2.5 hours. One other variation that we can use for this time right here, I have it specified 2.5 hours, and that is fine, but if you prefer, what you can do is you can come in here and say hours is 2 and minutes is 30. You can also specify seconds. Let's say there's going to be 2 hours, 30 minutes, and 15 seconds. And that's it. That's all there is to representing times and dates with some semantics behind them. Now I will provide a link down in the description to this code sample so you've got it as a reference. I'll also provide a link to the MDN reference for the time element. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching.